Well, howdy and welcome. It's Scott and Jeff, and uh, today we are talking about if Mormons are Christians. Uh, we are, of course, two practicing Mormons. Um, and by practicing, I mean, uh, th I guess the term is card carrying. Card carrying, yeah. If you've ever heard that before. Yeah. But, uh, and by card carrying, we'll explain this in another, another episode, another program. But uh, there's cards that you can have that we can carry that kind of identify us as uh, active and practicing members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. It's not like a driver's license, though. Well, it doesn't have our picture on it. No, it doesn't. But it does have our little, signature on it. Yeah, a little barcode, right? Yeah. It does have a little barcode, yeah. that's right. But, we're, but we digress. Well, we digress, <laughs> and there's no reason to be mysterious. It's called a temple recommend. Oh, yeah. And uh, if you're just learning about the Mormon church for the first time, uh, there are buildings. You've seen them around, depending on where you live. They're all over the world. Um, they're not on every corner. Unless you live in Utah. If you live in Utah, yeah. it seems well, we like they're everywhere. 14? Is there 14 I temples? It's at least 14. Now, when, when we say temples, we're not talking about uh, church standard, standard, church buildings, uh, chapels. Those are found on every corner in Utah and in parts of Arizona, uh, California, Idaho, uh, pretty much anywhere within a certain, yeah. I don't know, maybe a thousand miles of where the church is headquartered in Salt yeah. Lake City. 150 operating temples around the world. Is that the round number 150 yeah. now? And I think, I think there's a, a, a number, a handful, 20 to 25 more planned. And uh, yeah. And, so. But in order to enter one of those temples, you have to A, be a baptized member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints, which we will call from here on out for time's sake the Mormon Church. You probably know us as Mormons. Um, and you have to be worthy to go to the temple. You aren't automatically deemed worthy just because you're a member of this faith. However, having that little card, which we call a temple recommend, is, um, I don't know, it's, I guess it's evidence mm -hmm. that you're living a life that is uh, worthy enough to be able to enter a temple and, and uh, worship God in a temple. And yeah. again, we'll talk about some of this in a later episode. Yeah, yeah. Our question today that we get hit with a lot, mm -hmm. and by we, I'm going to go ahead and represent the over 16 million members of the church worldwide <laughs> because it is it's heard often and that is why aren't you christians why don't you believe in jesus are you christians um you travel a lot yeah do people know that you're a mormon wherever you go no i mean, I mean it's not like you I, yeah it's not like i've got you know i'm wearing something on my clothes or a stamp or something like that but uh you know when i tell people that i'm from utah you know a lot of times that oh you're mormons you know yeah, are you guys Christian? You know, and it's like, well, uh, of course. Uh, and, and uh, you know, the, the, first of all, the name of the church, the Church of who? Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. That's the one thought that enters my mind. The other thought that enters my mind, I know you, you made mention of this a little bit when we were talking before, uh, is, of course, the Book of Mormon. We're going to have some, some videos and episodes on that as well. But the subtitle to the Book of Mormon is Another Testament of Jesus Christ and I just found out recently that if you read the Book of Mormon and if you're really a data number cruncher you'll find that every 1.6 verses has either a direct mention or yeah some sort of an uh, allusion to Christ 1.6 verses throughout the entire book which now has that of course means chapters. that you know you are gonna have some chapters that are you know his name or something about the Savior or the Lamb of God or something sure. is mentioned every other word and those are going to, you know, cover the places where you might go a while without actually, because yeah. yeah. it is, it's, it's covering the whole book. It's an average, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I mean, I love that. Yeah. I mean, let's just state clearly, we are Christians. Now, some people will say, well, you call yourself Christians, but you're not Christians based on, you know, the actual definition of a Christian. And, and to which we would ask, well, what is that to yeah. you? Yeah. Well, someone who believes in Jesus Christ as our Savior, uh, who believes in His grace, who um, believes that He's the Son of God, that He died on the cross for our sins, and so far, as long you know, while you're saying that, I'm ticking that off in my mind, going, "Got it, yeah. good, yeah, thank you, yes, we have that." Yeah, <laughs> you know, I mean, we again, may we just state clearly. 
we absolutely, it's not just that we believe in Jesus Christ. Uh, he is the absolute central figure in everything that we do believe in. Um, he's the beginning of all of our beliefs. In fact, we, Joseph Smith, the, the prophet who, who uh, established, restored the church, we'll talk about this in another video as well, he put together a series of articles of, of faith, 13 of them, that he said he put together because he was asked these questions so much in order to just save time. It was almost like a, a public affairs press release, if you will, yeah. that he had these published, these answers to these many, many questions that he had, that he was constantly getting. And the first one is, we believe in God, the Eternal Father, His Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Right off the bat, yeah. there's mention of what, you know, most Christians um, of many faiths would call uh, the Trinity. Mm -hmm. But further down, about two or three more down, he also says that the first four principles and ordinances of the gospel are first, faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That is where we start. Um, it's not an appendage. It's not an afterthought. It's not something that we went, oh, the other Christians around the world, they really, really believe in Jesus. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. it's like, duh. You yeah. know, I mean, it's, that's the first thing mm -hmm. that we believe And that in. word belief and faith and, and that, you know, for us, it's an action word. Um, you know, we, as, as, try, as hard as we can, we try to make sure that it's not just lip service, right? Yeah. Um, that I'm trying to act and uh, emulate and live my life in a way that Christ did. Um, you know, you've got your, your Bible verses that you can think of that everybody is aware of. You know, feeding the naked, uh, I'm sorry, clothing the naked, feeding the hungry, uh, taking care of the widows, things of that nature, and a whole, ho whole host of other things that would kind of show yeah, my, that my faith fruits. is something that's action. Yeah. It's not... Just okay. I'm yeah, sure, and and I and I, I don't really live up to those. Jesus things. himself said, "By their fruits ye shall know them." Yeah, it's somewhere in the New Testament. You know, Jeff and I are both. We both hold the priesthood. Um, we're both fathers. We've both been members of the church pretty much our whole lives. Um, but I don't think either of us could sit here and quote exact references. No, <laughs> I'm not going to pontificate. <laughs> you know, in Second Chronicles chapter twenty nine. Right. You know, yeah. we're not that. Which is, in fact, the Old uh, yeah. Testament. Yes. Um, that much I do know because I taught a lesson on Second Chronicles too. last yeah. week. Are you a Sunday school teacher? Yeah. I am a Sunday school teacher yeah. as well. So we, we've got that in common. We'll talk more about that All in another episode stuff. as well. But. but you mentioned a good thing earlier, Scott, and this might give some good uh, episodes coming up, these 13 articles of faith. We could probably do an episode on each one of those. This yeah. first one really takes care of that first article of faith. You know, we believe in God the Father and in the Son, Jesus Christ, and in the Holy Ghost. Um, so if, if you are, uh, you know, happening up, uh, uh, you know, upon this video and wondering a little bit more about, well, well, what is this all about? I would highly recommend reading through those 13 articles of yeah. faith. That's, that's a great place to start to get a good basic foundational understanding of just what are these, what are these Mormons all about? Yeah. If you go to LDS.org and just type in the search menu there, articles of faith, it will come up right away. And again, as mentioned, it's 13 different quick little uh, declarations of our faith and who we are and what we believe. Um, but to kind of just wrap this one up, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, please be, if you're just hearing about Mormons for the first time and you know you hear the word Mormon a lot, who is Mormon, what is Mormon, again, another episode for another time. Remember the subtitle of that book, the Book of Mormon, is another testament of Jesus Christ. There's the Old Testament, which pretty much is uh, Jesus's book from pre-Jesus days. So, you know, he mm -hmm. was Jehovah of the Old Testament. It's a testament of him and how the people worshiped him as Jehovah. The New Testament is, of course, his own. He's alive. It's witnesses, the four gospels and others. And now the Book of Mormon, which we'll talk about again another time, is another testament of Jesus Christ. We believe he is our savior. We believe he, through under a, a commandment from the Father, created this world. We believe that he is our brother. We believe that he is the son of God and that to just kind of put a bow on it, uh, we believe that there are three members of the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, but we do not believe that they are one entity, that they're one person, uh, which is a, a, a fairly a common belief, a Trinitarian belief. Mm -hmm. We believe that they are three separate 
personages, um, just as we read in the New Testament when Jesus is baptized. There's Jesus there being baptized. We hear the voice of the Father, and the form of the, the, the dove is the Holy Ghost. There's three different entities at work, but they are one in purpose. And so um, it doesn't detract from the authority or power or kind of holiness of the Savior at all to think of him as a distinct individual from his Father. In fact, if anything, it helps us uh, recognize the power of unity in purpose and that uh, the Father and Son are one in purpose and look very much alike as a father and son do on this earth. So if you have any questions, if you have any further, uh, there's a lot more to know about this, of yeah. course. Uh, we encourage you to, again, look at LDS.org and search for Jesus the Savior, Jesus the Redeemer, Jesus the Anointed, the Good Shepherd, uh, the, Good Shepherd the Lamb of God. There's all kinds of names that are associated with Jesus, but I think you'll be pretty, you come away hopefully convinced that we, yeah, they're Christians. Mormons are Christians. <laughs>